Hey Rogue Tech fans, today we've got another flashpoint. This is a loyalty flashpoint for Canopus. It's called Alliance Magistry of Canopus, so <laughs> the hint is in the name. Right, so what are we up for? Well, we've been told that there is a perfect contract for us. Huh? What's that? Two R's? Yes, it's Cat Girls. I'm afraid we have been hired by Cat Girls. Word of warning, if you do this um, flashpoint, you, your Harko will become infested with cat girls. Yeah, okay, some of the crew don't mind. And when I say infested, you'll see what I mean. Actually, before we start, let's just check something. I, at the moment, have a barracks with 24 people in it. Oh, sorry, 23 out of 24. Before you do this, make sure that you own every player that you want to own. Because uh, you'll see what happens. Anyway, let's find out what the flashpoint says. As with other loyalty flashpoints, you must be allied in order to be able to get this, and it's heavily weighted, so it's highly likely to appear once you are allied. So, we have got Patricia Vincent. Oh dear, yes, she's a typical cat girl, as you can see. So, this is what they want us to do. They need us to go and rescue them, because her band of other cat girls has been taken. Oh dear, look, there. <laughs> the musical enchantment overworld meow for their band. Yes, it's there's so many, so many cat jokes in this, but I do love this flashpoint. It's fairly simple, and um, yeah, you do get a lot of cat girls at the end. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. They're actually not bad pilots. So let's um, continue forward, and let's, as as uh, they say, let's get on with it. Now you will notice that the cat girls, when you read the text, have absolutely no compassion for us whatsoever. They're so self-centered. But then, what do you expect from cat girls? You know, all they want is what, what comes to them, and they want <laughs> they don't care who does it, just as long as it works out their way. So, let's see what we have to drop against. It's not very much. It's a fairly easy flashpoint. I will be doing it with super heavies, just because it rushes through. Because, I mean, yeah, you can do this flashpoint with fairly low um, difficulty lance, but hey, let's just wing it. <laughs> let's nuke them. Except I don't have any nukes, so I can't actually nuke them, but you know what I meant. Okay. We're finally about to drop. Hopefully you've had a chance to read all of that text. There is a lot of it. Okay, for difficulty, it's rated as... Oh, actually quite high. Four and a half skulls, so difficulty nine. But bear in mind, this is a flashpoint, so of course you will only have the typical four units to take with you. We do now have a map, which is absolutely beautiful. I love the addition from that. Thank you, K-Mission. Right, so let's... Uh, as ever, I'm just going to take maximum salvage, just because why not? And let's see what we're up against. It's a capture base mission, so here goes. Right, as far as units, I'm going to take the Black Rose. Because it's a capture base, we know that we're going to get to have to actually reach the base to capture it. And I'm going to take one of my Black Roses with the um, Carronade. And, of course, my two new wishes. The Prime, which is the tank, and the B that's got the hyper lasers. It should be easy enough, so let's drop. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Okay, here we go. So simple capture base as ever with flashpoints. We will be positioned automatically. And the base is just over the rise. This is one of the reasons I've actually taken the Carronade, because I can just lob things at them while we're getting into position. And of course my two new wishes are now pretty quick, thankfully, because as with super he other super heavies, they can rush through these trees as though the trees aren't there. So they don't slow them down, which is absolutely brilliant. And on top of that, of course, the pilots have got maximum affinities. So they've got the extra boost to super heavy speed. Right. What are we going to do? So Oddball is going to jump himself forward. I will be using the DNI cockpits because, hey, I know Oddball can take damage, but it gives him an extra initiative for next turn. Have we will probably see the targets come over the rise. There we go. We've got a mix of turrets. We've got a VTOL. As I said, they're not exactly going to be hard, are they? I don't know what they are because obviously we can't tell. Have we got spawn protection in flashpoints these days? I'm really we do. Spawn protection protection has now been added to flashpoints. That is a really useful piece of information. Right. Um, I won't put Gremlin in quad mode just yet. I'll just rush forward a little bit. I will of course put the buffer DNI on for Harkonnen so that he gets his extra initiative and the compact enhanced imaging for rain. To be fair. I expect we'll get to go before most of these units because 
they're tending to be quite weak units, but they might have higher initiative. Yeah, yeah certainly the warrior has, but that's no surprise given VTOLs. Okay, the Osso has. Ooh, is that, it's not quite the same one that we actually get to drop uh, when we're taking Narf, but it's not far off. Oh no, I've taken two points of damage. I think that'll be fine. Right, so Ogbo's up first. Come up against are bigger and better than ours, so that all we can hope to do is like scare them away, huh? Now Ogbo is very good as a tank himself because plane. he's got heavy ferrofibrous and he's got a whole bunch of other stuff to reduce damage. Oh, there we go. So we can now see the base, as I was saying, and yeah, <laughs> reinforce their low sum facility with turret emplacements. Yeah, I I was kind of expecting that to be fair. Right, I am going to put the blue particle shield on, which will further reduce any damage from lasers that hit sh hit Oddball Shrike. And of course we're going to brace so that we get maximum damage protection because we're in trees. Right here. Mm. Is that a cockroach? UMCR? It is a cockroach. These are the little guys that come with black carapace. Now I only see them, I believe, because I went and took the option this time to, well, to go after cockroaches rather than the queen. I know I've always been against, the, you know, after the Queens in previous seasons, but hey, I just fancy doing something different. Right, I'm going to take out the heavy Calliope this time, I think. So we're just going to whack in three lots of FAE ammo. We're also going to make sure we hit the control burst so it further reduces the chance. As I've said before, the problem with the Carronade is it blows itself up very, very easily. Uh, so I think I've still got about a 30% chance of a misfire here, even without all of the mitigation I've got present on the Gremlins go. unit. Have we managed? Ooh, lots of damage, but I don't think we've got away without a, a misfire on the Carronade. Awesome. Right, so we're going to rush forward as fast as we can. Oh, we will get something in. Oh, of course, the Warrior. Yes, the Warrior will be in line of sight. Now, if I just target it, 79%. That's not bad, actually. I was thinking it was going to be lower because it moved quite well. But if I put my Pulse Module on, it's 99%. These Laser Pulse Modules, if you can get them, are absolutely brilliant. So let's take out that warrior. There it goes. One unit down, one turret down. Oh, we did kill a turret. I didn't even notice that. Which turret did we destroy? Oh, the one in the middle that was on the building. Huh. Talk to me. <laughs> it's always always nice when you've destroyed something you didn't intend to. Roger. Unfortunately, Hard and Calliope is still present, but hey, we'll get it down next turn. Ah, uh, now. My Black Rose does have the absolute minimum of hard gel present, so it will do some repairs, unlike the two, two railgun ones, which I've just not found a way of fitting it. Um, so it doesn't matter if you get shot a little bit, absolutely fine. The Shrike, of course, will be fully regenerated by the end of the next turn. Right, Always so Oddball is up first. Wave, what can we do? Always with the negative waves. We could jump down and take out the turret, or we could just stand here for a little bit, and I think we're just going to stand here. Because if I leave him here, he's still fully protected, and it means he can act as a little bit of a damage sink, so he can shoot their little heart's content out at him, and he'll be just fine. There you go, with all of the mitigation, including the, um, hey, what the hell's going on out there, man? <laughs> whatever it's called, the thing I was talking about just a minute ago. Oh, it's, I'm afraid today is another day. I've still not had my second coffee in the morning, so that's why I'm probably forgetting basic words. You know what I mean. The oh blue particle shield, hey, there we go. Those are over. That we reduced the damage the from the Ossol's lasers. <laughs> right, do we want to go yet? Oh we could do. <laughs> like I think he could. I think I'm going to try and jump onto the cockroach. Because if we can take this thing out through um, with a head jump, headshot, whatever you want to call it, then we can get ourselves an extra black carapace after the mission, oh, which is always worthwhile. Always the oh, he's taken out the left Probably torso. So you see, the problem is, with whenever you're d going after a mech that has uh, black carapace, it's so easily damaged. I mean, you can see what happened there. As soon as the left torso's down, the hey, black no, carapace the was destroyed. There, if you want to get hold of black carapace, which are really amazing stealth combined with hard gel armors, the best way is to go after the cockroach option go and find some low difficulty missions because you simply will not get cockroach missions at higher difficulty although be aware they are actually really really hard difficulty which yeah. I know is, is nonsensical but there you go 
and then you go after the tanks because you will find some Bola Serpentis Black and those tanks are amazing for getting hold of Black Carapace because every single one of them has a high chance of dropping it. Right, we're going to try and take out this Gauze Rifle emplacement so we're going to again fire three FAEs and hope it doesn't crit. Oh, we've got a crit on the Karanar. This is the one problem with doing it. Most missions, after I've used it, I have to repair. I mean, it's it's a lovely weapon. Well, it's not. It's a bit of a weird weapon. But it's great fun. Right, I am putting Harkonnen in the open. I know I don't really need to, but just as a matter of, of course, I always put um, Phantom on so that he, he's less likely to be shot. We're just going to shoot these hardened gauze in placement, and that'll take it out of action. <laughs> I mean, like, so okay, many two mechs, ways, two bases, turrets on. down, and we've still got rain to play. I don't think he's going to be able to see anything. Oh no, he can. Excellent. He can take out the other turret. Now, of course, his hyper lasers are really high damage. Let's have a look how much we need to take. The LRM has, oh no, it's got 500, so we wouldn't even be able to get it, even if I put them on to overclocked mode. Um, when you do this, it's worth bearing in mind that while overclocked, the hyperlasers have an even higher chance of critting. But let's do it anyway. Target acquired. So you can see massive damage, but yes, we had a hyperlaser crit. In standard mode, with the current build that I've got, with the things like the BC Jam and, and um, everything else that's built in, he's pretty good and doesn't often have a hyperlaser crit. But you put them in overclock mode, it's yeah. almost certain that one will. Uh, right, so what are we doing now? We are going after more units. We will go and jump on top of the Ossa, I think. So 77% chance, so slightly lower. But I sh I'm sure that'll be fine. I still need to get some more leg upgrades for this this uh, Black Rose. It's, yes, I know, it's a Black Rose and so it's the other Black Rose, but this is a Shrike Black Rose, whereas, of course, where's it gone? This is a Black Rose, Black Rose. So yeah, a little bit confusing. Anyway, we did manage to hit the Ossal. We've managed to damage the pilot, but not quite enough to take him out of action. Commander. Right. You'll notice that when we're using the ability control burst, it lasts for two turns. So on the third turn, when you're using it, especially with a Carronade, turn it down to just one. You do not want to crit, because it's, it's uh, already been damaged, and we don't want to have it further damaged. I'm just going to finish off this LRM turret. We'll just fire a single FAE at it. That's a thermobaric, by the way, which is why you get the smoke, you get the fire, you get the explosions. Absolutely awesome ammo. Right, so three turrets down, two mechs down. What else can we do? We're going to run forward a little bit more, and I think we will finish off the... Ooh, I could either finish off the turret or the ossal. Let's go for the ossal. Right, as you can see, the, if we've got normal accuracy without the pulse module, it's 78 put the pulse module on 87. Are we in range for the... we can, we can switch to damage mode, so that's even higher damage, 84 even though he's in cover, and hopefully that'll be enough to finish him off. Well, it's taken out some more, done a bit more damage to the pilot, not quite there. Right, we've still got the bulldog left, we've still got a turret left. I must watch um, Oddball, because of course with the new um, chance to fail, it, I wasn't actually checking. Were we at risk of failing the blue particle? Not yet. So we're okay. Right, rain is up, so we're going to put him back into normal mode because it's just stupid using them overclocked when you really don't need to. The only time I normally use overclock mode is if I have to absolutely take something out fast. Anyway, it doesn't look like I can get in range of, or, or get line of sight on anything, so we'll make sure we turn the pulse module off and we'll just end his turn there. So we've still got the Bulldog and the turret to fire. Now as with any base capture, once we've captured that base we will be getting reinforcements. Have a little faith. You see this is why I have built this new Isha Prime as a tank. I mean look at the look at the damage it took from those rockets. One point from everything. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Yeah, it looks like the reinforcements have arrived before we've taken it. I didn't actually realise that could sometimes happen. Or did I? I don't know. Right. You gotta hit it point blank, we are going to jump on the Bulldog this time. Oh, I mean, part of the reason I've given him hardened ferrofibrous is because, of course, every time you do a jump and you land on something with the DFA, it damages your own unit. 
and so the, at least he can largely repair what's been damaged using his hardened ferrofibrous. Okay, Harkonnen is up. I'm going to go... Where can I go? If I... I'm going to move Harkonnen across to the side here so he's ready to take out the other units in a second. But first, we'll just finish off this turret. We don't need damage mode. We don't need the laser pulse module. Again, because of this new crit chance, turn it off. If you don't need it, turn it off. Now the thing with the Supras, if they're in standard mode, they do it. They produce a lot less heat than if they're in either ranged or damage mode. So that's also worth bearing in mind whenever you're using one. Oh, as I thought, the Shrike has become the hey, main God, target. What the hell's going on out there, man? <laughs> At times like this, kind of wish that I hadn't got um, Oddball in the in the pilot's seat because he doesn't half complain about it. But you know, it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? Right. All we're going to do is we're just going to take out the Ossol, and that should be enough with these three shots. No, it wasn't enough. Oh, that was silly of me. I should have probably done a headshot aim. Never mind. Yeah, even the new Isha B is actually a pretty effective tank. He's not quite as good as uh, the one that Harkonnen's piloting, but it's still pretty damn amazing. Of course, I'm not standing in trees this time, so my damage reduction is considerably less. Barely hit, Commander. Right, where are we going? We've got Gremlin. So, Gremlin can once again use control burst, so we can up the FAE, or whatever we fancy, to three. Now, these lot are placed beautifully for massive damage, so we'll just go for the Grasshopper in the middle, and then you can that's going to do quite a lot of damage to all of these lot, as well as producing a lot of heat on them, and we didn't crit the Carronade for a second time. Two crits, and you cannot risk actually multi-shotting with it anymore, because <laughs> otherwise it's going to blow up. And when the Carronade blows up, it can literally take out the whole mech. So you don't want to lose your mech if you're using a Carronade, now that we can no longer have long toms very easily on mechs. But we can have long tom cannons, but hey, the Carronade is like firing three at once if you want to risk the, the uh, uh, misfire well, chance. Right, as you can see, the blue particle shield has gone from 0 to 34% chance of failure this turn. So yeah, we're taking that off straight away. Now what we could do, we could just go and charge him, which is 210. That will do self-damage, but it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? Let's do it. When you're charging with a mech, they do more damage the further that they've travelled. So you can build some amazing charge bots if you use some of the fastest either little small running mechs or a go and build a lamb. One of my most effective was one of the 50 ty 55 ton Shadowhawk X4s. No, we do not have the I mean that thing, if it managed to do maximum range charges, I mean this is, this is before mo mobility was changed as a, as a skill, but if it could do maximum range charges, it was able to do over a thousand points of damage in a charge from a 55 ton mech. The only downside, as soon as it charged, it was like so open to being able to be destroyed by everything around it, so yeah you had to be super careful. But yeah, I, I was almost tempted to actually make a whole uh, team of them, because could you imagine how insane that would be? Right, so we are going to put our laser pulse module on. We're going to take out the bombardier because he's annoying. We'll just aim at the chest because it's taking quite a lot of damage. So if we get a couple of shots on that, it should take him out. There we go. One bombardier down. Uh, what a waste. Right, yeah. Gremlin, as we know, is on the second turn of control burst. So we can afford to still fire three, but we do not have three lots of ammo left. I still haven't found much of this. It's so hard to find now that we no longer get it on a lot of mechs. Anyway, what shall I do? I will do high explosives because we've got three of them quite close together. So we'll fire three high explosives Locking and see what target. damage we can do. Ooh, something blew off one of them there. And we've misfired a second time. So now that we know that we misfired a second time, I'm just going to set it to one to remind myself, don't do it. Don't fire multi-shots anymore. Right, the Valkyrie side blew out. Mad LT, that's one of the long tom ones. I wonder if that one's got... It looks like it might have um, some of the ammo that I was just saying about. I don't know. I wish it would tell me what ammo it's carrying, but I don't think I've got enough sensor readings to take a look. Have I? Or have I? Uh, just standard long tom ammo there. No, I'm guessing he doesn't have more than Inferno. 
let's um, take them out of action anyway because I really don't want to see more long time shells coming at me. So we will put laser pulse module on. We're going to take an aim shot straight at the head because I have gone and used Warlord as well which increases my chance to actually hit it in the head. So 17% chance to hit the head. That's not bad, is it? Roger. Have we got a headshot? We have. Their headshot's down, but it's also destroying the side torso. So who knows what will... Oh, he's not down. What? I thought we hit the head. No, it was just an ammo explosion that's gone and made him bleed out. Blast. Right, we can also move, so let's move into cover so that we've got a bit more protection in case we get shot back at. A little bit concerned about my Black Rose because, yeah, Oddball is facing backwards to them. Now, of course, when you face backwards, you don't get the protection of being in cover or being braced. <laughs> There's not much left on that poor Valkyrie. Um, Look, for this turn, Oddball is going to jump right into here, the cover because where we've destroyed right? the building, we get cover just like if you're in trees, so we can get 60% immediate cover plus all of the bonuses he's got. So we'll brace there because there's not much point doing anything else. Right, Gremlin's turn. Now, we know we are only firing one at a time now. Who can we kill? We've got the Marauder is almost down, so I'm just going to fire one at the Marauder, which should probably finish it off given the amount of damage it's taken. There we go, they've ejected. Okay, so we've just got the two mechs left. We've now got Oddball in place to capture the base. So we've just got the Grasshopper and the seriously damaged Vi... Valkyrie? Valkyrie? <laughs> I can't even remember the word again. Once again, coffee. Get coffee after this. I think what I'm going to do, before I do the next mission, I'm going to go and get some coffee. Take the advice I've just given myself. Right, aye, aye. let's move along with Harkonnen. I made the mistake there of not checking before I moved. If his pulse module was at risk of failure, it wasn't, so I'm okay. We're going to use an aim shot, and we're just going to finish off this grasshopper. Roger. There we go. Four in the chest, and he's down. That's one so just the Valkyrie one. left, and I think Rain should be able to finish that off from where this, from where he's standing, indeed. Oh, look at that, yeah. No arms, no side torsos. I think three shots should be enough to finish it. And it was. And there we go. Mission complete. So we have now helped Patricia get her meow band um, so rescued. And so let's move on and see what the next mission brings us. Right, so there we go. Captured. They're now going to... Yeah, quite a few appreciative citizens of Canopus. I, I'm not sure how many are citizens and how many are just cat girls. Like I said, it's a true infestation when we finish this mission. You'll see what I mean. OK, so we're going to move back and we'll move on to the second mission. Mission successful. Right, so we have had crits on both the New Isha B and the Black Rose 2A. You know, I wasn't that surprised because Carinade always goes off and I did deliberately overclock that just to show you what would happen. Um, what else have we got? We've got a fair bit of pieces to pick up. I don't think we will have picked up the black carapace because I'm pretty sure we destroyed the torso before it would have been recovered. We'll probably put the 400 engine in and the XL because they're worth a fair bit. I don't see any sign of it, I'm afraid. Oh, protective padding. This stuff is actually really hard to get. As you can see, I've only picked up two other pieces this entire season that aren't currently in use. So I tend to pick that up, even though it's not high value. I love it. I mean, I, I use a lot of mechs that don't have tack resistance. So the protective padding makes such a difference, especially with super heavies where they've got the spare slots left over so you can just dump it in. I mean, it's light as well. It's only 0.2 tons, but it does take up two slots, which is why it doesn't really work in anything apart from super heavies. Um, we'll take the heat sink kit as well because that's also high value. And we didn't get any more thermobaric ammo. I was I was hopeful we would have, but I didn't didn't look like he was firing it. So yeah, not that surprised. Right, what else should we just take? We'll just take the bulldog because that's reasonable sales price. Take the marauder and I don't know. We'll take the warrior because most lambs, uh, most lambs, most VTOLs do still sell pretty well compared to other stuff. Anyway, let's move on to the next mission. Okay, we've got a consecutive mission, so I'm not going to be able to use the two mechs that we had. We've got a simple battle coming up, so that'll be easy enough. I will put my new C in place, and we'll take Gremlin away. 
We'll take the Shrike away because it needs repairs. Let's move the new Isha Prime to there. I'm going to keep Harkonnen. It's like, I know he's been damaged because he's, he's already fought a mission. It's not really a problem. Um, so along with Harkonnen, we will pick, pick Wraith, the other new Isha pilot. So what else should we take? Standard battle, let's take our two railguns. Uh, can't have too much overkill, can you? Right, railgun pilots, we have Ajax. And we have got, where is he? Uh, Ether. There we go. These are our two railguns. So we've got okay, and four lovely little super heavies. I I highly recommend when you're starting a new career, think about which super heavies you can buy from factories once you're either allied or at least friendly with a given faction, and start there because they are so much fun. It it might take you a little bit of time to build up the cash to actually buy one, and then even more time to get one battle ready, but so worth it. I mean the the changes that Red Bat has done this this season for all of the super heavies are absolutely awesome. Anyway, let's deploy. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. I just have to say, I love the thinking behind cat girls. They believe we can teleport. No, it's a dropship. <laughs> but for them, they're, they're a bit way with the fairies. So yeah, let's go and teleport behind them and take their forces down. Okay, this is going to be a simple battle where we're fighting the weebs that's talking about. I think there are going to be probably two lances to fight. So, one on top of the hill there, and additional force over there in that valley. It looks like pretty easy for us to do. So, let's see what we're up against. Again, we will have spawn protection on flashpoints. I must admit, I love the idea of spawn protection on flashpoints, because sometimes that first turn can be a bit painful. Not so much, because obviously if you're, if you're okay and don't end up... Um, <laughs> missing your turn because you're or getting shot at first it was okay but hey it's much better now right so buffered vdni on for harkona moving Good forward man. can we see any targets we cannot that's interesting okay and uh, the new issue c is a close copy of the prime it's not quite as good at defense and it's much better for accuracy uh, why is it much better for accuracy you, i hear you ask it's because in the shoulders it has these brand new where is it sitting where am i look look I'm, are they in the arms there we go shoulder of the minotaurs on both arms what those do is they greatly increase the accuracy of anything mounted in the arm i mean they're awesome so this makes wraith really accurate compared to Got the prime but done. even so i mean the prime is pretty damned accurate um we're going to do the same with our two rail guns we'll move one over this way i think and then one over the other way they're not quite as high as I would like them, because I do like having my railguns on the highest possible location they can. Now the problem I do have is that railguns don't have any form of hard gel. So when these things start opening fire at me, it's going to hurt if they hit those. Well, I mean they're still super heavy, so it's got loads and loads of armour. But it's it's not quite as good as with the new issues, which can go and heal themselves. I have tried so hard to find a build that actually works where I can put decent amount of hard gel or hardened ferrofibrous or similar um, for the black roses. Unfortunately, they cannot use black carapace because they're super heavies, which is a real shame because that would have been useful too. Um, I mean, there is the, sh the cloak of Hakati that you can get from zombie mechs, but apparently it's about a 1 in 250 chance to get. That would have been ideal for these black roses. I just haven't been able to get any. You don't want to know how many missions I've done against zombies. But to give you an idea, I now have 106 of the infected Myamas. <laughs> so that means to get those, that's it's not quite 106 missions just for those, because I got some from both uh, the, the um, Halloween gift and also for doing the Flashpoint itself. Um, but it's, it's a lot. Yeah, I, I picked up ever such a lot. Right, so we're now up with Ajax. He's going to put himself into quad mode because that gives you better better recoil and things like that. We've got the Ostrock and we've got the Banshee up here. We're just going to try and take them both out with a couple of railgun shots. This is the clan railgun, so this is the one that also has in the head the... Um, is it in the head? Is it in the chest? It's somewhere. Where have I put it? I'm sure, I'm sure this is the one that I got my RTO module for. Um, but I can't think where I've actually installed it. It's got to be somewhere, hasn't it? Um, nope. I'm sure it was in the head. Am I going mad? 
I don't know where it's gone. I know, can't see it anywhere. It's it's around somewhere. Anyway, is it in one of the legs? <laughs> where have I gone and dropped it? Oh, this is where I wish you had a full sort of like pull up where you could just see exactly what you've got here. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I'm using the RTO snafu on this one, which gives it extra damage. So here goes. Oh, there goes the legs of the banshees on the ground. And the Osrock has been cored. I hope we can salvage that. And I think I'm going to move into cover because then, with again, when the you're using um, siege mode, it means you get extra bonuses from being in cover. What can I do for you? I, well, I don't think I can actually move very far into cover here if I was in siege mode, so we're just going to have to shoot some stuff and hope it takes them out of action. We're going to take out the Warhammer. What have we got over here? We've got... A Black Knight. Yeah, I think we'll take out the Warhammer. Oh, it's a bit, bit risky because I'm actually shooting straight past my unit there, so I might instead take out the Banshee. The thing with railguns, if you haven't got 100%, well, 99% accuracy, you can almost guarantee it'll miss, it'll take out your own unit, so I, I advise never firing straight no past problem. one of your own I'm units just in case. Everyone. Okay, the Warhammer has lost its side by look of it or leg. And we've taken yeah, out... Hit. No, the the Banshee survived. Unbelievable. We're just going to sit there, I think. We've got quite a nice little raise section there. Right, Harkonnen, can you finish off that Banshee for me? Let's go and put Phantom on, because we are getting closer. I think we'll run in, because it'll get us that bit closer, even. Ready to run. Now, we're not going to go and need the Laser Pulse module, because I would imagine it's... Oh, it's not 99%. But, I'm sure we can get... No, we're still too far away for damage mode. Okay, so we'll just fire four straight into the torso. Let's see if that finishes the Banshee. It does. There it goes. Battle neck down. I mean, as I said, this isn't isn't the hardest of missions, but I mean, they are assaults, so it's it's like, yeah, you know, you've got to be a little bit careful. Um, I'm going to run forward here with um, Wraith's new wisher. This is the one with the Minotaur shoulders, so absolutely awesome accuracy. 99%. We're firing at the Warhammer. Again, it's lost most of its stuff. The, t the torso is, the side torso is gone, so this should be enough to finish it off. And there it goes. Okay, that's three out of the four of the first Lance are now down. We've got the second Lance moving in, and I thought they'd do this. They're trying to shoot my poor old Black Roses. I would too if I was them. Right. Do you know, the only thing I find really difficult with quads is that they're remarkably hard to actually fit properly. Because they don't have the slot capacity of a, of a normal mech, even a super heavy in this case, I just find you start Better putting the weapons commander. in and Nothing you don't have room for anything else. So, yeah, build-wise, they're lovely mechs, great idea, but build-wise they are so hard to get right. And I'm not kidding when I say that, they are really, really hard to get right. Okay, we've got the four of the second squad are coming over the top. It's our turn to shoot back. So we're going to turn Eth around. I'm just thinking I am going to put Vigilance on because they are shooting everything they can at Ether, so at least it means less damage taken. Right, what have we got for the turns? So 16, 21. Okay. It doesn't look like the Black Knight has gone yet, so we're going to have to take out the Black Knight. And I think we'll take out the Hunchback because it has an AC-20. Let's see if this manages to finish these two off. Yep, Black Knight has been cored. Oh, and we've taken the side off the Hunchback. What the more? Huh? Is it the side with the AC-20? It is! The AC-20 is out of action. What's up, boss? Guns off the field. It doesn't matter if you do that by actually taking out the whole mech, or if you do it by um, taking out part of the mech. Now, I can only see one. That's a bit frustrating. What if I sprint? Can I get into range two? I can, and I'm going to i put myself a little bit at risk I'm out in the open. So again, I'm going to um, put Vigilance on so that I'm braced. Right, I think we're going to just take one shot at each of the other two. We do have, on this mech, we've got Compact Enhanced Imaging unlike the other, so it does mean that when you're shooting at two separate targets, cover and stuff does not have an effect. So you'll notice if I do that again, it takes up to 480 damage on that one. And there goes the Orion. The Orion is down. And a side off the Talus has been taken off, so that's looking pretty good. So we're down to just three units to take out. We do have a little tank sitting up here somewhere. Where is it hiding? How do I get to that? What is it? 
It's an LRM carry. And, uh, it's an LRM carrier. That means we're going to have to run up and find it because it's not going to come and play ball. Don't blame it. I wouldn't either. Right. We'll just start sprinting the Harkonnen up there to sort that out as soon as he can get it into line of sight. That was weird. I thought something had gone wrong there. Cursed blood affected. Oh, of course. Yes. Because I have fitted the... What's it called? The BC... Curse of the Sy Sidekona. It's... <laughs> It, I don't know what it really does. It uh, apparently can make anything fall over. It's a little bit ha like having a, a lessened version of Snarf, so if they try and jump or sprint, there's a fair chance they're going to fall. Right, can I get any in line of sight using Wraith? Oh, I can actually get the vehicle in line of sight. So we're going to go to there, and let's see if we can take out the LRM carrier. Oh, that's looking pretty good. We'll go and put the pulse module on so that we get total accuracy, and that's five, three shots, at, four shots at it. I can't count. Okay, that's the first mercenary patrol is down, and there are only two left in the other. We did, of course, um, put vigilance on both of the railguns, so they should be able to finish them off. The only problem is I've actually got two of my own units in the line of fire. They are both 99%, but it's still a risk. One of these could miss and kill my own unit. Let's hope not. Here goes. First one safely through. It's taken out the Talos and the Hunchback. Yes, there we go. And that's the second patrol down. I think this ends the flashpoint. I think it is only the two missions, unless there is a convoy mission to follow. Ah, oh, that's nice. There screams of music to her ears. Well, I imagine that will be in one of their next great works. Uh, yeah, a song made of the enemy's screams as they die. Mm. Mission successful. Right, moving on, and I, like I say, I think that was the last mission. Let's see. Okay, decent payout, 1.7 million. Yeah, there's nothing happened to my mechs at all, really. A little bit of scratches on, on the two Black Roses, but that's about all. I don't think we've picked up anything interesting. Maybe there's a decent engine in there. Maybe not. No, it's it's rubbish. Every, <laughs> the whole lot is absolutely awful. Well, we'll take the two LRM carriers. Um, you'll notice, because we are allied with Canopus, we do have Loot Magnet in place. I mean, it's not great because I haven't really done much for them. Um, I don't think it makes a difference, does it? If you're allied, you're allied. But it just means that you can pick up multiple items, you know, like, so they get stacked more frequently than you would do otherwise. So, 16 million salvage. Let's uh, see what happens now. Right, so it looks like a debriefing. Yep, they are being reunited and they're ready to rock. But wait a minute, where are they going to go? Where do they want to have as their base? Oh no. Yep, they have decided they like our ship. They want our ship to be their touring base. <sighs> so the poor old pilots, they're all going to have to double bunk because, as I said, we, we had 23 out of 24. Before you do this, I'll remind you, make sure you have all the pilots you already want. Uh, Darius likes them apparently. Um, so yeah, they're looking for how to dispense revenge and the best way they can think of is to join us. They're actually not bad. I mean, they, yeah, they're cat kills. Yeah, they're gonna like clog up all of the all of the showers and the sinks with hair and yeah, there's gonna be a mess of makeup left around. Uh, it's no different to having teenage daughters, know how that is myself. But you know, it just means we've got them on board. So we have two different options. We can <laughs> it's a bit, bit extreme, isn't it? Newcomb good. Eliminate with extreme prejudice and pleasure. Or show mercy and allow them to live. Hmm. What do you reckon? More importantly, we say, should we, should we go... For, I'm, I, you know, I can't for the life of me remember what happens with these two options. I'm going to go be and lenient, because I'm a nice, nice captain, really. Let's go get them back. Meow. One daughter Neanderthal is. Oh, right, okay. Right, I think we've got one more mission to do. A special reward. Uh, yes. Okay, we do have one more mission to do. We have got number three, and this time we have got a recovery mission. That's nice and easy. I think we'll just do this using our usual one pony trick. Um because, hey, why not? It's nice and easy. With any recovery missions, you can do that this way. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, we've got a limit here of maximum 100 tons of a mech. We're not even going to take 100 tons. We're going to take 30 tons. You've seen this happen before. We'll put my um, commander in the pilot seat, 
and that's all we're going to take. It'll say, what? Are you sure? I think you need more for this. Nah, it's fine. Don't worry, Darius. We've done it before. Okay, here we go. Actually, since you last saw this la uh, the Wasp in action, it's been upgraded. I was able to get hold of a 100% LAM booster, which means not only does it go faster from that, it means I could install more LAM turbines. So this little thing is it's so fast. So what do we have to do? We have got to pick it up from there, and we've got to escape to there. Uh, that's it really, isn't it? Uh, there, it's a Neanderthal uh, the artifact. Jungle. I'm not you sure they mean Neanderthals as we know them. Anyway, the, the advantage we have, we have spawn protection, because it's turn one, at least I think we have spawn protection. So we're going to put the image enhancer on, we're going to take off, because so let's be honest, a down lamb isn't much use, just in case we're going to put phantom on. And then let's just show you how far this thing can go now, it's nuts honestly. Right, so it'll take a while to calculate because it has such a massive range that it can now fly. Still going, still going. <laughs> still going I mean we could almost reach the extraction point which is somewhere over here in one goer you know okay so you can see if we wanted to we could move that far in, where's it gone it's somewhere in the background there that far in one turn we don't need to do that we just want to get to here we'll go to there for the 13 so it's an extra pit just in case we get shot at but I don't think we will because I'm pretty sure we've got spawn protection oh now that we're in an urban I don't know if you'll notice but actually the things like electrical transformers, they've been fixed. We can now use them as a viable way of damaging stuff nearby. So yeah, big hats off there to, uh, I think it was Redbat who did that, or possibly K-Mission, one of those two. So yeah, thank you guys, you've done an awesome job. They're one of my favourite tactics in an urban environment, and I am so glad we can once again use them. Uh, I can't use them this time, but you know, if it was a, a normal mission, I could have blown that up and probably damaged all of these around here. Except, of course, my own wasp is here now, but you know what I mean. Right, where's the extraction point? Over here. We can almost get there just in walk speed. Um, so let's just whack it over in sprint, and that's the end of the mission. And that should be the end of the flashpoint. I highly recommend making a wasp like this. And there we go, we have extracted. So they've got their gear back, they found the Neanderthal era artifact, and they're really happy. Uh, but yeah, this is, I'm afraid, they're going to give us a rare gift. They're going to perform on our ship, and they're not going to leave. It's just a terrible infestation. There's, there's no known cure. Okay, decent payout again, 1.7 million. No damage to the wasp, but then literally none of the enemy got a chance to fire. And of course no salvage because we didn't kill anything. Okay, the flashpoint is still active. I thought that was the end. What else have we got to do? Let's have a look. Now I think if we'd have taken the other option it would have been a base destruction. Uh, but it looks like we're doing that anyway. Because <laughs> they really, really don't like these things. Okay, so we do have a base destruction. So before I do that, I'm just going to repair up my mechs. And then I think we'll... Um, because base destruction, you, you want to take the carronade. You know, if you can lob long toms, you've seen what it does to turrets. So we'll fix that up. I'm sure it has the Fs... Where's it gone? Oh, now I'm, I'm going... I swear I'm going mad. I could have sworn I had put... Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of one of the rail guns. Oh, dear, I really am losing it. As I, I was saying I need coffee, I still need coffee. Haven't had any yet. Okay, the new wisher also took a crit to one of the hyperlasers. Um, I mean, if you have a look at them, you can see they do have 20% basic crit, and then it goes up by another at 30% when you put them in overclocked. So it's, it's not worth using them in overclocked unless you absolutely need to. Although the build that I've got does have the compact imaging enhancing, which reduces um, the chance of... Where is it? Somewhere on there. Oh, no, it doesn't. What am I talking about? If I put the wrong headgear on that, I should have probably used something else, because that one does not reduce the crit chance. But I do have a BC jam there, which does reduce it by 25. So I could further reduce it if I switch out the compact ima enhanced imaging for um, 
one of the other cockpits that does include it. So well, yeah, I might think about that. Anyway, sorry, the, the FC Advanced TVC does have minus 20% multiply. So we've got the 20% there, 25% there. It means that this 20% it rarely crits, so it's not bad. Okay, that's those two repaired, so we just need to move right. time forward a little bit. It'll mean all of our pilots are back ready to roll again for the final mission, which is the base now destruction. One thing to bear in mind, these Nico are incredibly vengeful. So even though we didn't take the nuke option, which I think would have taken straight to this base destruction mission, uh, they still want it done. They want to take them out. They want to erase them from history. So yeah, let's let's do it. We could take th ooh, 3.3 million. That's tempting. Given the, the uh, drops have been a bit rubbish, I'm going to take the cash. Let's do it. Right, mechs, what are we going to take? We're going to take the Black Rose with the Carronades, we're going to take one of the Railguns, and we're going to take the Prime and the C, I think. That should be a good combination. So Ajax, he'll be in the Railgun. Then we've got Ether is a Railgun as well. It's, um, who do I Gremlin. Oh, there we go. I've got so many pilots now, I keep forgetting who's who. Um, we also need to take... Um, Harkonnen? Where's he hiding? Be under H. Oh, he's still injured. Uh, let's not take the Prime then. We'll just put the C, the B in instead. So we will take um, Rain in the B because the difference is, you notice the B, it has Sharpshooter as the 20 point. So if you look at Rain, he has the ability Sharpshooter for new issues. Whereas if we look at Wraith, Wraith has the ability Cooler Master which basically is the thing that the Prime and the C have. So this allows for less heat production and more heat sink capacity. Right, let's drop. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Okay, let's destroy the base. Command interface initiated. Okay, facility is just up ahead. Be cautious. Yeah, we know there's. Oh, it's this one. Oh, this one's always interesting because it's right at the top of the hill. Um, it's not often you get this as a destroy base mission, so that's that's quite cool. Yeah, they want it to reduce to rubble. <laughs> Honestly, they are so vengeful. Yep, never ever ever cross a cat girl. Um, heavy snow falling, so limited visibility, extra cooling. This is why I've gone and brought along the railgun, because we've got a whole bunch of, of um, assault mechs against us. So it's not the easiest flashpoint as far as the mechs that are against you. But having said that, it's not so bad. I mean, we, we've got the units we need to take these out. We're going to put um, combat image enhancing and siege mode on. And then, ooh, can I move into a tree from here? Yes, I can. Always worth going and using trees for cover, because it gives you that extra protection when you're in siege mode. No point firing because it's turn one. We can't even destroy house, uh, buildings anymore. Right, the railgun is going to do similar. Where can we go that gives us really good line of sight on them? Pretty much anywhere by the look of it. I'm going to go over to here. Again, it means we've got some cover because we're in trees. So if they do get to shoot first, which they probably won't because they're assaults, then it's not so bad. We won't take as much damage. Right. We are going to use the... Which one's this? This is the C, so this is the one that's going to be my main tank mech, so I'm going to run into the trees there, same reason. Get a bit of protection up going for me. And then I think with rain we're going to go slightly the other way, so we can get try and get a bit of a line of sight. Now I know with this mission we will also get reinforcements over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, at the edge of the map here. So the reinforcements will arrive here when we get within range of the base. So I'm going to start heading over that way already with rain, no so that, that uh, rain's in position to take them out. Okay. First active turn, here we go. What have we got against us? Oh, the stalker gets the first turn. I mean, this is why I put the new C in the trees, <laughs> so that she, she only takes one point of damage. I think that'll be fully repaired in a minute. Okay, railgun is up. What can we do? We can go and hopefully take two of these out. Uh, we know the Stalker's already moved. So what have we got? We've got the Highlander. They can be quite nasty. And we've got the Orion. I think we are going to take out the Highlander. Oh, okay. It's uh, the Quick Cell one with the with the Streak PPCs. Interesting. I'm going to add Warlord because obviously it's not quite 100%. 
still not quite. 97, that's close enough, isn't it? Surely with a 97 I can't shoot my own units. Can I? Let's find out. Firing on multiple enemies. And there goes the Highlander. And there goes the Orion. Now that was a very effective volley from, from the railgun. Excellent. Good job, Ajax. Okay, we've got another one of those moving, so that will be the... Is that an archer? Two are it is. Yeah, the two mechs that they've hit. I mean, luckily if they'd have hit the railgun, there would be no repairs. But the um, 2A does have limited hard gel. It's only hard gel 1, so it like doesn't do much, but it'll, it'll repair those scuffs. Because you know, you've got to have your mech looking at best, haven't you? Um, right, we're going to lob a couple of FAEs straight into the base. We will, as ever, do control bursts. I'm going to try and take out the turrets. What have we got? We have got hardened point defence, not too worried about that. Hardened AC emplacement, not too worried about that. We're going to take out the heavy LRM turret. Or at least we'll do some damage to it so it'll go down next turn, probably. <laughs> look at that. I love using multiple long toms on a base. I mean, look at the explosions we just saw. We've just blown out almost all of the walls. We've damaged all of the buildings. I mean, that was just so much fun. I don't, did, I, did I crit? I didn't even notice if I critted my own... Um, nope. The Carinard did not crit. Even better. And that's what I was worried about. You see, the LRM turret, unfortunately, it was still up because it just burst through the armour. It didn't take it out. Uh, you can't have everything. Right. New, um, we're going to move Rain over here. Good old Okodo. What are we going to take out? We are going to try and shoot out the Stalker, I think. So we'll put Warlord on. We're going to target the Stalker. It's 100 points of damage on each shot anyway. So let's see if we can get a headshot. We've got... I didn't check what the accuracy was. Probably near 17, isn't it? Yeah, 17.1%. Didn't look like any of them hit the head. That's a shame. Okay, I think Wraith's job is going to be to run up as close as possible and put on Phantom because we're still not in range to call the reinforcements, so that's good. Yep, Wraith is going to put Phantom on and let's see if we can hit the Stalker again. It's only We're going to use the Pulse module because it's not quite up to 100. We are in range for damage, so I'm going to whack that up so we go from 80 to 106. Now, what do I aim for? If I aim for the side here, it's going to basically tear everything straight into the into the central torso so let's do it and there goes the stalker that's the advantage you have if you aim at a, at a side torso that you know is about to go down as soon as that first one bursts through the damage or bursts through the side torso the rest of the damage gets transferred straight into the central torso so you can take things out of action really quick oh it looks like I had a some sort of damage, possibly the compact enhanced Imogen has tried to hurt Gremlin. Advantage of the cockpit, it has these two extra points, so we don't actually take injuries for the first two. Because of course every turn it's on now, it has a 1% chance to cause just that. Right, what are we going to take out this time? I'm going to just fire at the LRM turret again. Three at it, let's see what else we can take out. We might take out some buildings this time. <laughs> We've, we've just taken out all four buildings and that turret all in one go. Now that was awesome. Okay, so next turn, of course, I don't have the advantage of um, Gremlin being able to shoot three, so it'll be just a single one being shot in, but I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay, again, I'm okay, quite glad... <laughs> quite glad Wraith is tough. Um, right, Ajax has got a shot. I'm think Ajax is just going to basically shoot this thing out. Two shots straight at it with the rail guns. Let's see if that's enough to take it out. There we go. Oh, that's a strange view. It's just zoomed me too. <laughs> Looking through the landscape. Right, so what we do know is that we're going to have these guys coming over here. So I think it's time to start moving my Black Rose into a better position to be able to get a bead on them. It looks like we have another LRM turret at the back. That will be one of our main targets then. Waiting for orders. I don't think I can get into line of sight there. Commander? Right, because we know Wraith is probably going to get into range of the base, I'm just going to run... At, no, I'm not going to run, because I noticed the instability there with Wraith. Also make sure the Pulse Lager module is off. So we're just going to walk over to here and brace with Wraith. 
I think it will be probably another two turns before we activate the reinforcements, so we've got time. Got something you want done? Um, same thing here, we'll get Heading out. rain to move up. Do we need to turn off the laser pulse module? I did not check. No, not on, so that's not a problem. Right, Gremlin yeah. is going to fire just a single shot this time, because it's just not worth it. You, we know that if we fire multiples, we're going to end up um, going and critting the weapon. So we've got the hardened point defense, that's not too important, that's not too important, that's the one we want to go after, so we'll just fire a single shell Here over the top go. at it. There we go, that's done a fair amount of damage, we should be able to take it out next turn. It's actually done damage to all the others as well. I'm not too bothered. While they're taking out Wraith really? and Wraith's braced, it's like, what are they actually going to do? By. Nothing. Okay, I'm going to turn quad mode, uh, siege mode off, so that this time I can go a lot faster. Now, again, the, the Black Roses, they only have a little 200 en rated engine. Is it 200? I know. Quite small. 120? No, 200. So, they don't go super fast, but because they have got maximum um, affinities, they're able to run at a reasonable speed for a super heavy that's actually quite slow. Especially when they're not in siege mode. So it's, it's worth Ready doing because then on. you can actually uh, get a little bit more distance out of them. And yeah, well worth it. Right, I'm going to run in close. I might well spawn the reinforcements this turn. No, not this turn. I'm going to brace because we know we've still got the LRM turret to worry about. So we may as well just sit there using vigilance. Ready for orders. Right, rain is going to move up into the trees, which right. does a similar similar job. Damage mitigation. We're getting closer to the base, even though I know we need to go over there as well. Right. Good to go. Wraith, you're up. So, it looks like Wraith is going to be in range of one of the turrets. If we move up to there, can we get into some trees? We can. Right, we're going to go up to the trees here. And we've got a good shot at the AC emplacement. I don't think we're in range for damage. No, it's 99% even with laser pulse, so we'll just fire away. Fair amount of damage to the armor on that. That thing is well armored. Yeah. Right, so we've got Gremlin is going to use her control burst again, whack it up to three, and we're going to take out the LRM turret. Where is it? There it is. I mean, given the inaccuracy of the Carinade, it could it could hit anywhere in the base and take the others out too. <laughs> Lots more damage. There's not going to be anything left of that base. They wanted it done with extreme prejudice and joy. Was it? Well, Something like that? So that's what we're doing. We're doing what the Nico have asked us to do. Yep, vengeful cat girls, we're doing the job exactly as requested. Um, I don't think I can get anything into line of sight here with Ajax, but at least we can move into a better position so we're ready for when the reinforcements arrive. And then rain, what can rain do? Again, not in line of sight of anything, but if we run up the hill there behind Wraith, we should be able to get better for next turn. Right, so, are we going to finally see some reinforcements arrive? How much damage is that hardened? Uh, there's, there's only nine points left on the LRM, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually now going to fire another three, but this time at the hardened point defense. I highly expect at least one of them is going to do those nine points of um, damage. Come on, surely! All out of AC 20 ammo. No! It took seven damage! Oh, seven damage, and <laughs> it's now literally got one point of damage left. Look at that. How, how ludicrous is that? Right. Well, anyway, we're out of um, Thermo Barrack now. Ah, they're shooting at the Black Rose. Light damage, holding firm. Come on, we need to take these out of action because this is, this is not fun anymore. Where are we going to go? We're going to head up to there. Roger that. Right, this time I am highly expecting yep, us to actually see reinforcements arrive. Um, Rain is going to go in there and hopefully take out that turret Contact. there. And not down either, come on! And we had a hyper laser crit. Unbelievable. Wasn't even in overclock mode. Right, this is definitely going to be close enough now because we're going to be right on top of the base. So the reinforcements are incoming. And there they are. What have we got? We've got a Bulldog Palisade. Palisade? I don't know what a Palisade is. Is that one of the new tanks? Got a Longbow. Can't actually see the others, but I'm sure they'll turn up soon enough. Right, 
Let's just finish off this turret. There goes the AC turret. We still have the LRM turret with one health. Surely it can't fire. Okay, we do have line of sight now. What have we got? These these maps with hills are really weird to sort of move along. Oh, we got a behemoth. Okay, yeah, that's quite tough. We'll probably take that out as a priority. That's the palisade. Okay, it's a little 60 ton LBX equipped tank. Nothing much to worry about there. And the bulldog, the quick sail bulldog. <laughs> okay, yeah, and a pirate longbow. Right. We'll put ourselves back in quad mode and let's just move a bit closer. It looks like we're just taking out the longbow because we can't see anything else. It's only 63% accuracy. I think what I'm going to do is put Warlord on so it increases the accuracy. Of course, they have got drop protection. That was a headshot. We did a headshot. In fact, I think we did two headshots. Unbelievable. <laughs> I wasn't even aiming at the head and we managed to get two um, railgun shots straight through there. That's going to be messy to clean yeah. up, isn't it? Right, so gremlins up. We are no longer using control burst, so we're taking it down to just one shot. I think if we aim at... Oh, we're going to have to just take out that LRM turret. This has got to do it this time, surely. There we go. There goes the turret. So we've now just got the point defense turret and the three tanks left. I'm going to move forward a little bit. Don't know why. Just felt like it. Got something you want done? Right then, rain. What can you see? Rain. It looks like if if I move to there, I get a clean line of sight on the demolisher. Is it behemoth? Sorry. Oh, look at the yeah, accuracy. That's really poor. So we'll put the pulse laser module on, and that's boosted it considerably. Now you can see the middle laser has been damaged. What I'm going to do? I'm going to put the other two into overclocked mode, so we can hopefully burn through this armor on this thing. No, it's quite tough, but we... Oh, of course, we've critted another laser. Which one did we crit? I b bet it's... Uh, n yeah, that one. So we'll put that one back in standard mode as well. Well, that one can still fire again, so that's not a problem. Commander? Wraith, what can you do? I think we're just going to take out the point defence turret. Because at least then that's done, and we don't have to worry about it. We are well and truly close enough to go into damage mode, so we'll put the Supras into that maximum mode for 106 points of damage each. It should be plenty to take this thing out of action. Unfortunately, we just got a new Wisher in a way, so we didn't see it happen, but there it goes. Final turret is out of action. Right, so here come their tanks. Of course, they're going after my railgun. Systems holding. I really need to find a way to build it so that it can have hardened ferrofibrous or something. The problem is, if I do that, I only get one railgun. I just don't know what to do. I love having hard gel present on my mechs. It's something I've had for the last two seasons, and honestly, it I just... yeah. It means build, building is a challenge at times. But on the other hand, totally worth it. We definitely need to take that thing out of action. Right, Ajax, you're up. We've got two clear line of sights against two of the tanks, so let's try and take out the Bulldog, and let's try and take out the Behemoth. If I can get a click on it. Ah, uh, I was saying, these hills, you can't, you're constantly scrolling and scrolling back with your wheel. There we go. So we've got clean line of sight against both. It's not the highest accuracy. We can't use Warlord this turn, but it uh, should be okay. There goes the Bulldog. There goes the behemoth. And that's the way we so we it. just have the palisade left to destroy. Can I actually see it with anyone? That is the question. I can't see it with rain, so I think I'm going to reserve because it's not. It's just not worth going I'm in if you can't see it. We will go for control burst on gremlin. Now I think if I fire infernos, you get extra damage because they damage vehicles a lot more than because of the fire they do. So we'll just fire three infernos at it. It'll burn oh, out the trees too. Mm -hmm. Hasn't destroyed it. Thankfully did not cause another crit on my Karenard. Good to go. Now if I couldn't see it with Wraith, I very much doubt I can get into a position where I can see it here either. No. I'm still going to sprint forward anyway. Because we've still got Wraith that can take their turn after the Palisade is gone. We're going to reserve out in the hope that it moves into a position we can shoot it. Here it goes. Whenever vehicles move through fire, they also take burn damage. 
not much burn damage. You can see it's just like one point. It's, bit, it's like, uh, was it really worth it? But you never know. I mean, sometimes that burn damage is enough to cause them to actually go and, well, either destroy or uh, eject. Either of which I'm quite happy with. I'm going to use Vigilance just to remove the um, instability there on Rain and also mean that he gets to go first because I think he can just about run in and hopefully see it. No, it's still not still not able to get line of sight, so we will reserve rain. Uh, what about Ajax? Can you get line of sight on the thing? No. Okay, we're going to reserve Ajax as well. Nobody's going to move. The only one that's going to move is the Palisade. Right, let's lob another three shells at this thing. I'm going to move um, Gremlin out into the open so it gets higher accuracy, because while we're in trees, you have a reduced accuracy when you're shooting out of trees or into trees. Uh, still 21, because of course we moved. Right, here goes three more Inferno shells straight at this thing. Oh no, we've got a crit. We've got a crit on the Carronade, so we have to be really careful with it next turn. We already know Rain can't see it yet. What about Wraith? Can Wraith get into position to see this thing? Not yet. Okay, we are also going to reserve him out. Come on, little Parsard. Get forward so we can shoot you. Well, it looks like I'm going to have... <laughs> I don't really want a straight line of sight from my uh, Carronade, do I? But there you go. Standing by. I can get the rail guns at it. There we go. So Ajax should be able to finish this thing off. We just need one of these to hit. There we go, and it's done. And now that should finally be the end of the Flashpoint. It's funny, I thought this Flashpoint was only two fights last time I did it, which was probably the first season it came out. Uh, it seems it's actually up to four. So yeah, they won't be supplying any Cabellan forces anytime soon. Oh, now what? We're picking up a new set of contacts closing on the facility, mechs, big ones. I thought that was it. Surely there can't be another lot. <laughs> it looks like we've got five missions. Okay, really good payout, 3.4 million, but then we did just take the cash option because I thought, yeah, there's not going to be anything worth taking there. I'm amazed. I thought that was it. I didn't think we were going to have yet another mission. Uh, we'll take the two behemoth parts because they've got to be worth a little bit, haven't they? Or actually, was there anything worth more value down there? No, nah, they'll do. Okay, moving on to the hopefully final mission. Right, here we go. Is this a debriefing, or have we got yet another fight? So, let's see. Yeah, what devastation. She liked that. She got her friends back. I didn't think there was another. I thought that was really it. So now the mission is complete. It's time for you and your perpetually toiling crew's well-deserved reward. Oh, God, they're going to play music, aren't they? Oh, yes. Yeah, you don't want to listen to this unless, unless you've, like massively inebriated it's just no it's not good i don't know why people are so taken with the cat girls but it's it's not not no it's just not our thing <laughs> and yeah darius doesn't like it either my ears these cat girls sound terrible <laughs> oh excellent oh the translators apparently don't work over comms okay they better board instead this is what i said and they're expecting vip treatment <laughs> it's like what <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so hopefully they sound better in person. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you all of the different pilots we get given by this mission. And as to why you've got to make sure that it still says Flashpoint active. What is going on? Oh no, here we go. Rewards. Okay, so we do get a, a, a very basic loot box, but we get more than just a loot box. We get a whole bunch of cat girls. So... I don't think they're available in the hiring hall. I think... Oh wait, what's this? 31 out of 24 are taken? Do you remember I had 23 berths already taken? So we have gained 8 pilots from this, taking our total number to 31. This is why I was saying make sure you've already got the pilots you want. Because once you've got these cat girls, if you want to keep them, you either have to fire a bunch of other pilots in order to make room for new ones, or you just have the whole lot. So who have we got? We've got Bambi. Her abilities are pretty good. She's a technician, she's a mech warrior, and she's ex-military. Not bad at all. Moving down the list, we've got ECM. I'm here. Um, again, not bad. She's got Merchant, which is a great ability for reducing your sea bill upkeep. Um, she's dishonest, so she does steal stuff from you. We've got Flatline. 
And again, pretty decent set of abilities considering these are a whole bunch of free pilots. Ghost, another technician. Um, we've got ex-military and mech warrior. Then we've got gigs. Oops, sorry, I clicked too soon. Right, again, look, spacer. We've got ex-military, technician. I mean, they're, they're really nice little pilots to have on board. So that's three with a technician ability. Hurricane. Awaiting order. And Hurricane has got spacer technician four with technician so this is why it's worth doing this you immediately gain plus four mech tech points just from those first ones and then we've got ice t who does not have technician but yeah she's all right not that great and i'm sure we've still got one more missing there we go song another technician so fifth technician so plus five technician points and it takes your total pilots to 31 of course you do have to pay for them because they all have salaries Unbelievable. Not only have they boarded our ship, they're demanding we pay for them to stay here. Uh, yep, Cat Girl infestation is complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed that flashpoint. Um, as, as a reminder, you do have to ally up with Canopus if you want to have, it um, to have access to it. And just make sure you've already got your pilots, because as soon as you do it, you're going to be overloaded with pilots. Anyway, I hope um, if you liked it, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you all on the battlefield.